Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Uh, so anyway, we just finished up a leg day. Um, before I tell you how awesome it is and how jacked it can make your lower body, don't forget to do that YouTube thing. Help a brother out. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Do anything else you can think of that may benefit me so I can benefit you. See how this works? Uh, but anyway, seriously, we had a leg day today. Um, a good one for kind of getting a little bit back in the groove. Um, again, just the context of this, I, I hate to repeat this for 60 seconds every video, but I will for a little bit. Um, Terrence and I are just getting back in the groove. Um, he was um, off of training for a surgery for about five weeks. Um, we got back together training a little bit. He was on a little bit of a different split for a while. I was on vacation for a little bit. So we've basically been back in a group for about two weeks now together. And this is the first time we've gone through leg day. Um, he's about, I don't know, 12, 13 weeks out from the Arnold, uh, 14, 15 weeks out from the Olympia, give or take a week or two. I never really know what day it is, to be honest. Um, and so anyway, we're just ramping things back up um, and things are going great, to be honest. Um, you know, again, even for me coming off vacation, just having that little bit of a down, you know, my training is always slight ups and downs. It's really hard, especially when having a normal schedule, family being busy, same as everybody else to really keep things consistently ramping up. I'm trying to just keep a relative high level of performance. So both of us are in a nice groove to kind of ramp things up and we've been doing so. And um, so today was really good for leg day because every movement felt really good. Set a nice baseline of volume, um, had some relatively intense sets. Um, and again, nowhere but up from here. And again, just as I think this was really the last workout to kind of finalize what the split is going to be. So going through the session, unless you're new here, my single favorite hamstring exercise is seated leg curls. Someone right now is having something explode in their head because they were told that barbell RDLs are the king of hamstrings and anybody that says otherwise is confused. Um, then in case you're new, new here, um, I do RDLs too. I'm actually really strong at RDLs. I love doing RDLs, but depending a little bit on structure, and I would say the majority of people, your main strong hip extensor uh, is your glutes. So when I do RDLs, my hamstrings do grow, but my ass uh, just continues to grow at a faster rate until it's legitimately biblical in proportion. And um, so a lot of people are like that. I'll have a lot of bodybuilders come to me and be like, man, I'm doing RDLs, I'm doing RDLs. And they'll just have these huge, massive asses, which is cool if that's what you're into, uh, but they'll wonder why they're not getting any hamstrings. Um, and also, aside from the fact that when you're doing RDLs, glutes are probably the main mover, hamstrings as well. Adductors can also be a strong hip, hip extensor. And again, there's the weak link in the chain between your barbell, the barbell is your arms, your entire spine and all the musculature having to maintain that. So again, a super awesome exercise. I think it's a great erector exercise, back exercise as well too. But for some people, it doesn't get the type of hamstrings that I want and that Terrence wants. Um, again, where I say we're not after the best in the YMCA Planet Fitness hamstrings, we're after the best in the world hamstrings. Um, so that's the point of seated leg curl set up properly. You'll see how I have it set up. We'll have some extra close ups and shit. Um, I always like a seatbelt. I know I've been waiting to get the seatbelt installed at the gym for a while. So we've got the seatbelt installed. And then now we have a secret weapon we've never had before. We have Chewbacca seatbelt covers. Um, and so by harnessing his Wookiee power, uh, I did the math real quick, might be a little bit off, but I think the exercise is now like 247% more anabolic. So anyway, in a serious note, it's a great exercise because if you set it up properly, using the thigh pad, using the seatbelt, your spine is out of the equation, stabilizing your pelvis is out of the equation. The only other muscle that can actually really do knee flexion in that position is your gastroc, part of your calves. Um, so really it's about as much load as you can get directly to the hamstrings. Um, and I always say the proof is in the pudding. Everyone I've ever worked with for a while has some big ass hamstrings and Terrence's hamstrings have only been getting bigger and bigger. So we just prioritize that. And again, if hamstrings are your goal, I don't think there's a better place to start. Again, we've had RDLs in the program on and off for the past couple years. So they definitely have a place there as well too, depending on what you're looking to do. From there, we always generally have a squat pattern. We've done safety bar squats, front squats. We've had hack squats for a long time. And now I've got my favorite pendulum squat in the gym, so we're getting that a go. My favorite brand is Paramount. The company is no longer in existence and trying to find those Paramount pendulum squats is not easy, so good luck. Um, if you don't have one of those, don't bitch below that your commercial gym doesn't have one. I'm sorry, I didn't build your commercial gym and I didn't make you live where you live. So, you know, I don't know why you're telling me that in the comments, cool story. Um, so if you don't have the pendulum one, um, obviously you can do any of those other exercises that are a great substitute. So do, uh, again, front squats, safety bar squats, heel elevated squat variations are great. Our goal is more quad dominance. Hack squats are obviously amazing. And again, because I've done all of those in rotation for years. So I just love the pendulum squat because uh, basically for semantic reasons, the way that the platform is angled and the back pad changes angle relative to that black back pad form, back platform, it's even easier to get to depth. So for hack squats, a very, very easy exercise to get to depth, but it's very dependent on ankle mobility. And the uh, 
pendulum squat is less dependent on ankle mobility to get to full depth. So if you're looking to smash your hamstring into your calf, get a fully lengthened quad, maybe minus the rec fem, it is an absolutely awesome exercise to do. As an added bonus, better than the hack is it has a built-in good profile is it gets really freaking heavy as you come to the top and anyone that's used a pendulum can tell you you don't get a break as you come up normal barbell squat front squat whatever brutal at the bottom you kind of get a break at the top half top third um, so again it's a great profile very locked in helps take the back out of the equation again depending on who you are especially people extremely strong stronger than me at some point in time you know barbell back squats front squats it might be a little bit not the best trade-off for how much it is, how taxing it is on your torso if you're trying to get big quads. But again, everyone's different. They can still be a great exercise. So um, two working sets on the seated leg curl. Um, one working set for me on the pendulum. Terrence kind of did two. We're really feeling out there because again, I've probably used that machine now maybe five or six times. The last time I actually did it, I actually kind of like had a little bit of a mind fart, sunk in a little bit too deep and actually had a little bit of a, uh, you know, I strained my quad tendon a teeny bit. Um, and it honestly took me about it took me about a week to feel almost normal and today's the first time I felt like I could actually push it hard and it was fine. Um, so we're still both kind of getting in the groove. I love to go super full depth, but super full depth is still only good if you're actually being aware of keeping everything tight. So if, again, I think I actually let my quads relax a little at the bottom, kind of bounced off of that tendon, the elastic properties of the tendon and just strained it a little bit. Uh, but today felt great. I feel like I still had plenty of depth. Felt good, but I just went one set because I'd rather just do one. Um, and Terrence went one working set in the back off set, a teeny bit lighter. Same thing, if you don't really have your positioning perfect on something, there's no point to pushing to PRs, where basically pushing for a PR in a new machine could lead to an injury. Um, and again, that's the thing we're avoiding at all costs at this point in time. Um, from there, we did a super set of lying leg curls. So why have both in there? One, hamstrings are a big priority for Terrence. And I always say no one ever has too big a hamstrings. I've never seen it where someone's like, oh, his hamstrings are too big for his physique. I literally don't think anyone has ever said that sentence in the history of bodybuilding. So most people, um, you know, it's, it's good to incorporate a lot of hamstring work. It's good to do them earlier in the session. A lot of people say this. I mean, John Meadows has been saying start with hamstrings for, I don't know, when did John Meadows start bodybuilding? Like the late 40s, I think? Yeah, yeah right, right after World War II, I think. Um, you know, he popularized that. And, um, but anyway, so yeah, a lot of people do that. And again, just for uh, anecdotal evidence sake, which is, uh, again, I have a large, large body of evidence. I know John does as well too is um you know you won't take away from your quad output a lot of people think oh if i start with hamstrings am i going to take away from my squats no you won't uh, and again that's based off of months of comparing both starting just with a squat or starting with a leg curl and then with a squat and honestly it doesn't take away from it if anything it helps you warm up a little bit better and get a little better performance so lying leg curl we do that one because it's different than the seated leg curl it trains a different range of motion seated leg curl will take the hamstrings to their fully lengthened position but won't quite get them to their fully short and fully contracted position because they cross the hip so when you're in full hip extension like in a lying leg curl and full knee flexion you're able to fully shorten the hamstring so i think it's worth having both in there just to train that full range of motion again people talk about full range of motion in bodybuilding which is important but you have to understand a little bit of anatomy understand the joints involved the muscles involved and realize most muscle groups you can't train their full contractile range with one exercise. Pretty much everything you need, at least two. So that's the case for hamstrings as well. And again, we superset that with split squats, which I just love for a little bit of everything. Um, I love what they do for the back leg. So it's one of the ways to fully lengthen that one last head of the quad, the rectus femoris. So train that in a fully lengthened position, get the entire rest of the quads. I also like the fact that I get a lot of glute involvement, a little bit of adductor involvement as well too. I like doing some single leg stuff a little bit. Um, and you'll see I did a little bit of a different setup on that one where basically I just was trying to use the safety squat bar. So if you've seen me do these before, I usually hold dumbbells, which isn't a huge deal. Um, but the reality is to some degree that's going to limit load a little bit. And there's always an argument for the trade-off there. So, you know, should you always stabilize? Should you do something where you're balancing on your own? If you're trying to get big muscles, I still think you want stability to not be a limiting factor. Um, and you realize if you just do single leg stuff every once in a while, even on warmups, you won't use, lose that proprioception thing, that ability to balance. So anyway, first time giving that a go, just tweaked the setup a whole bunch of times on that one, but basically just a rear foot elevated or Bulgarian split squat, since apparent, apparently Bulgarians invented that. Um, I, don't, I don't know when that happened, but good job, Bulgaria, appreciate it. Um, but having that safety bar squat on there and stabilizing the front is gonna be something that really allowed us to load that movement in the future. So I did one heavier set, one back off set with body weight, and then finish with Prowler. Um, I've said this before, I'll say it again, and I'll say it again. Prowler, um, or a sled, but I think the Prowler's, I mean, probably not the original. I mean, they were pushing that shit in football teams in the 70s and stuff. Um, but as far as I know, the first sled I ever used was a Prowler made by Elite FTS. I'm not sponsored by them, shameless plug. So it's not shameless. Is it shameless? Dave, sponsor me, please. Um, but no, seriously, the Prowler, uh, I bought that thing myself 
12 years ago or something. I've literally dragged it around from gym to gym. You'll see it's completely covered in rust, but it still works. It's a piece of metal that holds weight and you can push it. Um, but again, from a sciencey standpoint, even though it's the most simple exercise, arguably the most primal exercise, much more primal than a squat or a deadlift is pushing something. Um, it is uh, also one of the most efficient metabolic type of exercises that you could have considering it's only concentric. So if you think for a minute, there's no eccentric, there's no loading phase. It's just step, 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 step. So the only loaded phase is concentric. Concentrics are amazing for metabolic stimulus. They arguably have more metabolic stimulus per distance, per range of motion, per load than an eccentric does. Eccentric is also more muscle damaging. Um, so as a result of, if you want some metabolic pump work, that's not also gonna cause excessive amounts of damage, not gonna be crazy to uh, recover from, it's one of the absolute best things you can possibly do. So while one, I think in and of itself, it will lead to muscle growth, I also think it's great for recovery done at the end of the workout. Um, and if you've done it too, then there's the other part of me that loves it. It, it's, it sucks, it's horrible. There's a main reason, I think why it's so underutilized in bodybuilding is because it's hard. Occasionally you'll have people just put some 25s on and push it up and down. These are the same people that do body weight lunges at the end of a workout, even though it's at 20% of their capacity. Again, metabolic and pump work is great, but it still has to be in close proximity to failure. So doing sled pushes heavy to the point where you feel like you're going to die at the end, I think is a really, really underutilized secret, except I just told all of you that, um, to getting some big legs. And I've always incorporated in some capacity whenever I can. So, and it's also great for cardio, great for the lungs. That's half of it. Most of the time, I feel like I'm gonna pass out and die as, as my lungs go on probably right on par with my legs. Um, and again, because it's only concentric, it builds up the most byproduct of contractions, lactic acid type stuff um, in a short period of time. That's why most people feel like they're gonna die. It has the warning label on the machine that says Prowler flu. It's because you build up so much shit in a such short period of time. All that acid, all that extra stuff makes you feel lightheaded, like you're gonna pass out, makes it feel like you're gonna throw up all those awesome things you wanna have happen as long as they're associated with some sort of benefit. So that is the leg day. This will be the main structure of our leg day for the next coming months. Little tweaks here and there. Um, add in probably, uh, the goal is probably we'll eventually get to two more working sets for hamstrings, um, adding one or two more working sets for quads. And then every once in a while we might put in something stupid, just a drop set or whatever, if our recovery is really, really good and as our you know gas tank picks up a little bit. So that is that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Go get some big ass legs. And again, if you didn't already, like, share, subscribe. And uh, like I said, leave me some feelings below. Why don't you just leave a complaint list uh, for me of everything your gym doesn't have and I'll call the owners and see if I can work that out for you. Uh, but just kidding, appreciate you guys. And until the next one, 